Hello all. Today let us discuss about murder investigation problem as an application to first order ordinary differential equations using the principle Newton's law of cooling. So before getting into the problem, let me first uh, discuss about Newton's law of cooling. See the principle Newton's law of cooling says, the rate of cooling of a body is proportional to the temperature difference between the body and its surrounding environment. See, there are temperatures to the body as well as you know the surrounding medium. When we know the temperatures of these two, as you can see here, rate of change in the temperature of the body is proportional to difference of the temperature of the body and that of the surrounding medium. Correct? And here capital T represents temperature of the body, T naught represents temperature of the medium, and T represents, you know, small t represents what you call time. Now see, as we know, uh, for any substance, you know, for any particular body, when you keep it idle for a certain time, automatically, you know, the temperature drops down. So when time increases, temperature of the body decreases. So since these two behave, you know, in two deep opposite directions, we'll replace this proportion by a negative proportionality constant. So that see, dt, dt by dt is equals to, you know, we write it as minus k times t minus t naught. And see, this is a simple first order ordinary differential equation. And when we solve this, uh, probably using variable separable method, we get the solution, you know, capital T as t is equals to t naught plus c into e to the power of minus kt. And see, this is the equation we use to calculate temperature of the body at any time small t, right? So when the, when the surrounding medium temperature is T naught, we can calculate temperature of a body at any instant of time T using this particular equation. Now see, keeping this in view, let's get into the murder investigation problem. Look at this question carefully. Try to first understand what information is given in the question, right? A murder victim is discovered and a lieutenant from forensic science laboratory is summoned to estimate the time of death. Understand? We are trying to estimate the time of death. The body is located in a room that is kept at a constant temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Understand? The body is observed in a particular room whose temperature is at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So that the 68 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be what you call medium temperature for us. And see the other information. The lieutenant has arrived at 9.40 p.m. and measured the body temperature as 94.4 degrees Fahrenheit at the time. Another measurement of the body temperature at 11 p.m. is observed as 89.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now with this information, we need to estimate the time of death, right? So the story is quite clear. Somebody has observed uh, you know, a body in a room and informed it, uh, informed it to forensic department. Some lieutenant from the forensic department has arrived at that location. Then he has observed the temperature of the body at two different instances of time. One at 9.40 p.m. and one more at what you call 11 p.m. Now see at 9.40 p.m. this uh, temperature of the body is observed as only 94.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Whereas at 11 p.m. see it is 89.2 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, when time elapses, see, there is a clear decrement of temperature. That's how you can understand it's a problem of cooling, correct? Now, keeping that in view, we are just proceeding like this to solve this particular problem. And see, the question is to estimate the time of death. So I'm just proceeding with this simple idea. Let me take, let me just define few things here uh, to proceed further. Now, let me take theta and B the temperature of the body at any time t, right? So let us just define it this way so that uh, the things will be easy for us. Now see, you are given temperature of what you call medium. See what is the medium here? It is the room temperature. So you are given that room temperature, theta naught, you know, normally we take it as theta naught as we just discussed a few minutes ago. So theta naught, you are given it as 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now see when it is this, look at it. The lieutenant has arrived at 9.40 p.m. and the measured body temperature as 94.4 degrees. So that you can understand now the initial measurement of the body temperature. 
So this is done at what you call 9.40 p.m. And if you take this 9.40 p.m. as the initial time, then see at this time, the temperature is observed as how much it is C? 94.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So that how can we write this? When it is initial time, you can understand when time T is zero, the temperature is observed as 94.4 degrees centigrade. Uh, I'm sorry, Fahrenheit, right? Then you are given another condition. Uh, see how when it is another measurement of the body is done at 11 p.m. So the next in, next uh, measurement is done at 11 p.m. Understand when it is at 11 p.m. How much time is elapsed in between these two measurement in, the, in in between these two timings? See the one is uh, first one is at 9:40 p.m. and the second one is at 11 p.m. It is exactly one hour 20 minutes. So let me write it in minutes. When the time is 80 minutes from the initial time. At this time, the temperature is observed as 89.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Correct? Now see, you are now, you got actually now two conditions. In fact, when theta be the temperature of, uh, you know, any body at any particular time T, if you recall the principle what we use here is this, theta is equals to theta naught plus C into E to the power of minus KT. Now see in this relation, already you know what is theta naught? And you need to calculate actually C and K. Now see, using these two conditions, let us uh, find the values of C and K one after the other. Now see the first condition what you are given. I'm just taking the first condition here. Consider you are given theta is equals to 94.4 degrees Fahrenheit when the initial time, I mean time T is equals to zero. Now, when I use this condition, uh, what happens to this? You see, the actual condition what you have is this theta is equals to theta naught plus c into e to the power of minus kt. Now, in this, if you use theta, you know how much it is 94.4 is equals to theta naught. See how much it is theta naught? Uh, as you can see, it is 68 plus c into e to the power of, you know, when you substitute t is equals to zero, here it becomes e power zero. That's how you can see C is equals to 94.4 minus 68. And see, when you simplify this, 94.4 minus 68 is, as you know, 26.4, right? So the value of C is 26.4. Now, if I use a second condition, what is the second condition C? It is theta is equals to 89.2 uh, Fahrenheit when the time t is equals to 80 minutes. Now see when I use this condition in that, uh, we'll get it like this. 89.2 is equals to 68 plus, you know, how much is C? In this relation we are using, correct? Uh, what is C? How much C we got here? It is 26.4. So 26.4 times e to the power of minus k into 80. So it is 80k. Now let me just simplify this to calculate the value of k. Uh, see how much it is then it is equals to, uh, we can write it like this, you see, e to the power of minus 80k is equals to, you can just send uh, this 68 as well as 26.4 to the other side. So that will get it like this, 89.2 minus 68 divided by 26.4, right? Now see, when we simplify this, we'll get it as, 21.2 divided by 26.4. But see, the actual idea is to calculate the value of K. So let me just take log on both sides. So that when I take log on this side, it, it becomes only minus 80 K is equals to on the other side, it is log of 21.2 divided by 26.4. And this implies we can then write the value of minus K as one by 80 into log of 21.2 divided by 26.4. Right now, see, I got the values of both C as well as K. So that I can write now the temperature of the body theta as, see how much is theta naught? It is 68 plus, uh, see how much we got C it is uh, 26.4 into E to the power of, what you have here is actually minus KT. And already see, I got the value of minus K here as, I'm just taking a bracket, it is one by 80 times, log of 21.2 divided by 26.4, right? All this multiplied by T, right? It is T 
t is t is equals to theta naught plus c into e to the power of minus kt. I've just substituted the values of c and k in this. Now see, this is the relation. Now we are going to calculate, or we are going to use to calculate the temperature of the body, right? In fact, at any time t. Yes. I still now remember that the actual question is to estimate the time of death, right? Now see, this is the relation we are using to find out the temperature of the body at any time t. And see now, as many of us know, the temperature of the body when it is alive, the temperature of the body when it is alive is normally about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, so normally the body will be at this temperature, and when the person is died, the body tries to lose the temperature from this much. So normally, when the body is alive, the temperature should be like this. You know, it, it should be this much, right? So when the person is expired, automatically the temperature falls down from this temperature to a less, a little lesser temperature. Right? Understand initial. Understand initially. When, when the lieutenant has observed the first measurement, which is at uh, what you call 9.40 p.m., the measurement was observed as 94.4 degrees Fahrenheit, right? It was expected as 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit when the body was alive. But after some time, you know, certainly it has come, it has reached this temperature, 94.4. So now with this information, can we calculate what would be the time for this, you know, for the body to have this temperature? At what time, you know, the temperature of the body is this much, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So what would be the actual time when the temperature was this much of, you know, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, right? See what you are given at 9 o'clock, uh, sorry, at 9.40 p.m., the temperature is 94.4. At 11 p.m., it is 89.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Then what would be the temperature when it was, what would be the time when it is, when it was 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So now we are just trying to go back, you know, behind the initial time. Let us see how much, it, how it is. Now, as we know, the initial, uh, I mean, the temperature of the body when it is alive is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, corresponding to this temperature, what is the time? That's a question. And what relation you have here, you see, theta is equals to 68 plus, I'm just writing everything again, 26.4 multiplied by e to the power of 1 by 80 into log of 21.2 divided by 26.4 multiplied by t. Now see, when theta is this much, 98.6, what is its corresponding time? Now, just to calculate that, I'm just substituting this condition here in this. So it is 98.6 on the left hand side. It is equals to 68 plus, I'm writing the remaining things as they are. Theta divided by 8, I mean, T divided by 80 multiplied by log of 21.2 divided by 26.4. Now, see, I'm just trying to simplify it so that we can write it like this. You see, 98.6 minus 68 divided by, you know, I'm sending 26.4 to the other side. So it is divided by 26.4 here is equals to e to the power of t divided by a t into log of 21.2 divided by 26.4. Now see if we can simplify this, see how, how can we do this? Because you see, because we have an exponential function on this side, let us take logarithm on both sides. So that we'll get it like this log of, you know, when we simplify this left hand side, we'll get it as log of 30.6 divided by 26.4, it is equals to, you know, on this side, it is already because, you know, we have taken log on both sides. So we'll get log of exponential as, you know, canceled one, and it is t by 80 times log of 21.2 divided by 26.4. And see, as we are expecting it, it should be now t, right? We are trying to calculate the time so that we can write then T as 80 times log of 30.6 divided by 26.4. All this divided by log of 21.2 divided by 26.4. Now see if we simplify this, right? Using a calculator, if we can simplify this, we'll get it as approximately 
54. Uh, in fact, you see, we'll get this as a negative value, which is minus 54 minutes. Right, what do you mean by 54 minutes? See, we already discussed, we are going behind the initial temperature. I mean, the initial temperature is already T is equal. I mean, the initial time is T is equals to zero. So as we are calculating the time before that initial time, we got this as negative, right? So 54 minutes from which time? You see the initial temperature when it is T is equals to zero, the initial time was actually 90, uh, sorry, nine hours, 40 minutes. Now see, the, uh, the time of expected time of death is the, temp the time when the temperature is this much, right? Expected time of death is the time when the temperature is this much, 98.6 degrees. See now, the temperature of the body is this much when the time is minus 54 minutes. In the sense, exactly 54 minutes before, you know, this initial time, right? That's how we can write, therefore, the estimated time of death. The estimated time of death is 54 minutes before 9.40 p.m. Right? 54 minutes before the initial time. That's how, you know, we got it as negative now. This is because we are, we are taking the time before the initial time. That's how you see we, we got it as negative here. And it is 54 minutes before 9.40 p.m. So that you see how much it is 54 minutes 9.40 p.m. It is nearly 8.46 p.m. That's how you see the estimated time of death for this information, you know, is 8.46 p.m. Now see, like this, being a mathematician, we can calculate the estimated time of death, but not who has done it exactly, right? There are some other persons who can do that. But see, this is how you can solve a murder investigation problem.